Hey guys, you're watching Let's Talk About Prepping. I'm Tyler, your host, and if you're watching this after the end of the world, remember that bugs are one of the most abundant sources of protein. Alright, so in this video we're not talking about bugs. We will in the future, but not today. Today, we're talking about silver. Now, I'm going to go ahead with this, even though I know I'm bound to get people who disagree with me. You cannot talk about silver without someone usually taking you out of context and disagreeing, but that's okay. Just know that I'm talking to a very specific target audience today. Now, what I'm talking about is how silver can help certain people start the path to saving money. And I'm going to make this a video VR challenge to anybody who wants to uh, pick this up. The goal here is to help people start getting into financial prepping. This is one of the most unpopular topics in prepping, largely because a lot of people come into this wanting a few things that they can do to check off the boxes or take care of prepping. They're not looking to change their lifestyle. But the true mark of a true prepper, somebody who is really preparing themselves for life, for life challenges and not just specific emergencies, their pet threats, is someone who's willing to change the way that they live their life to start being more fortified, being more prepared for any situation. And one of the best ways, one of the most important ways to do that is to prepare financially. There are a lot of ways that that takes form. For most people, it's going to be getting out of debt because the majority of people have debt and that's going to be one of the biggest hindrances to having financial fluidity to spend on preps now and in an emergency situation because there's two important factors to being fluid in your finances for prepping. First, being able to buy stuff now. You need to be able to have money that you can put to food storage, to making your lifestyle more sustainable, to all the things that you need to do to prepare physically right now. And you just cannot do that if all of your money is always spoken for. And a lot of you can attest to that. <clears throat> the other part is being financially pre prepared for the situation when it shows up. Not just having things that you've purchased, but having savings. One of the biggest challenges that any of us is going to face is job loss or larger uh, financial responsibility like medical bills. The majority of Americans, the majority of preppers are not prepared for that. I know that I'm not. One of my biggest goals right now is to start saving cash, to have at least a few months of expenses in cash so that if I lose my job or if some major financial emergency comes up, I have at least a couple thousand dollars sitting there ready to take care of that. That's something that I don't have. I think it's something that the majority of preppers don't have and is definitely one of the first things that we need to work on. Now, there are a lot of different financial situations that preppers are in. And this is definitely something that a lot of us need to be talking about because we are all in those different situations as channels and can maybe speak to people in situations similar to ours. My current situation is that I have always been financially neutral. I have never been in debt over a few hundred dollars. I've always purchased vehicles and things like that outright with money that I've saved. I've always been able to save money to purchase specific things, but I've never been good at saving money just for no purpose at all besides saving money. And that's one of the major things that I'm working on lately. I'm the kind of person who, if I don't have a specific goal in mind, and if I've got that money sitting there, I'm going to come up with a goal, and it'll usually be something I can attain with the money that I have. And I'll usually have good reasoning for why that goal is worthy of the money that I've saved. Now, one of the things that has helped me to save money and hide it from myself, and yes, that may be a silly concept to some of you, but for those of us who have disposable income but no specific target goal, we're just sort of staying financially neutral, living not paycheck to paycheck, but build a bill and more or less not necessarily having something that we're working towards because we've got ourselves covered. It is pretty easy to spend money if you don't have it earmarked for something. It's in your savings account. It's just a couple clicks away. Whether you go to the ATM or use your phone to transfer that to your checking, boom, you've got money. Now, one thing that has always helped me to hide money from myself is silver. When I have money, and you may be able to relate to this, I sort of want to go spend it. Not necessarily just, oh, I want to go spend my money, but there's always something that I want to get, whether it's more ammunition, more preps, or something fun. But I can tell myself that I'm going to be frugal. And rather than have that money sitting there just burning a hole in my pocket, I can go and spend it 
on silver, knowing that that is a form of savings. Now, I know a lot of you will say that silver is not a good form of savings, but honestly, it's better than many forms of savings, and it's better than a form of savings that you're going to go and tap readily. Now, you can just go sell your silver, but it is an extra layer of hassle to get access to your non-fluid value. <clears throat> so I've had quite a bit of success when I get my paycheck telling myself that my only splurge is going to be to go down to the coin shop and purchase some silver. It gives me the reward feeling of having gone and bought something, had a little bit of a fun time shopping around, if that's something that I feel like doing that week, but without spending money that I'll never get back because it's sitting right here. Now, I may lose a little bit in the future or gain a little bit depending on what the silver prices are doing, but it's important to remember that we're not doing this to try to make money because in reality, if the price is higher when you sell it than when you bought it, it's probably because your paper dollars are worth less than they were and not because some kind of magic happened and now you have more money than you did when you purchased this amount of metal. What this does is it solidifies your value into something that you can't just go get rid of readily and it protects it somewhat from inflation. I believe that silver will generally protect you better from inflation than literally having your dollars sitting there in a stack under your mattress depreciating as they print more and more and more. So this not only shields the money that you have sitting there just a little bit from the constant depreciation of cash inflation, but it also protects it from yourself, your greatest enemy when it comes to financial prepping. Now, silver can be fun, as plenty of us know. There are many different forms it comes in. You can get fun ones like Liberty Bells or Prospectors. Or you can get the cheapest and probably smartest form of silver, old mint coins. I'll show some images of these for you guys. But they come in many forms, many denominations, and perhaps one of the best ones is constitutional silver. Just dimes and quarters from back whenever they were made with a high silver content. They have a very specific amount. They can be purchased in small denominations, and they add up. They're readily tradable, and most people who care about silver will recognize them and be willing to trade in them much more readily than other forms of silver. So, people that I'm trying to talk to here are those who do not have debt hanging over their head, who have disposable income and are more or less financially neutral, but have a hard time having that money sitting there ready to spend without spending it, whether that be on frivolous things or just more preps. I know that for the majority of my adult life, if I had money sitting there and I was thinking of a prep I wanted to get, it was pretty hard not to just go and get a huge stack of toilet paper. And while for many of us that is a good thing to do, I sort of wish that I'd often put some of that money aside, whether in silver or in some other form of account that would still be there today so that I have that financial prepping ahead of myself rather than just a lot of stuff. Because there have been multiple situations where that stuff didn't help me but some money might have. And I believe that in the majority of situations in the future, that's the kind of circumstances we're gonna find ourselves in, where the stuff that we have is not necessarily as valuable as the money that we need to get something done. So anyways, this is just a small idea, and I definitely am planning to do more videos on financial prepping. I'm hoping that some of you guys will do a video response to this because I do believe that getting ahead of yourself financially and having a little bit of fortitude a little bit of disposable income to throw at a problem is definitely one of the best things that we can do to prepare ourselves for life challenges and momentary emergencies that we might want to prepare for. I hope this is interesting. Love to hear some of your debate down below and some of your input so that I can help regurgitate it back to the rest of us here in the future. Hope you're all doing well. Everybody stay safe out there. Mm -hmm.